this topic, we'll study departures. IFR departures vary widely. In fact, while not recommended, it is possible and allowable to depart in zero, zero conditions, in which case the departure airport would not be suitable for an alternate. So now, let's take a look at departures, which you'll commonly see abbreviated as DP. The shorthand for departure procedure is DP, and it simplifies ATC procedures, and they're most often found at busy, larger airports. DPs provide routing to get you over rugged terrain. They often contain a climb gradient, so you must be certain your aircraft can climb at or above the climb gradient when you accept the DP. You need to have a textual description to use a DP. Now, typically, this is in your approach plates, but if it's not, you can simply ask the controller to read it to you, and after you copy it, you will then have a textual description for your use in the cockpit. Now, if you do not want to fly a DP, you can enter no DP in your flight plan. If you enter no DP in the flight plan, the controller will read you a set of departure instructions that will get you onto your IFR flight plan successfully. Let's take a look at an actual DP. This is the NAT DP at Medford, Oregon. Now you can see right over here that there is a requirement for a climb rate of 400 feet per nautical mile up to 4,100 feet in order to provide obstacle clearance. Now since your vertical speed indicator shows feet per minute and you need feet per nautical mile, you must use a conversion chart. Now there will be a conversion chart provided with the FAA test questions. This is an instrument takeoff procedure conversion chart that you can see right here. This chart converts feet per minute into feet per nautical mile and it's based on ground speed. Now if our ground speed is 120 knots and our required climb rate is 400 feet per nautical mile, we can see that these two columns intersect right here at 800 feet per minute. Now if you have this scenario with a strong headwind, decreasing your ground speed to 90 knots, you will only be able to use 600 feet per minute to achieve the same climb gradient of 400 feet per nautical mile. This example shows why ground speed varying with the wind can play a critical role in achieving the appropriate climb gradient on a DP. Do you ever decide not to use a SID or a STAR? Well, SIDs and STARs are there to route traffic in quickly most of the time. That if we can get an, a SID or a STAR that really helps us out on our route, meaning a more direct route into the airport we're planning on going into, that's great. Now, if we're on a say a departure procedure that takes us way out and far away from where we initially planned on going in the first place, then what you're going to see is that, yeah, we'd love to go to direct instead of having to fly the entire departure. And again, that's simply asking ATC if you can do it. That if you ask to see if you can get direct to some location that gets you out and on your way, uh, the worst they can say is no. So go in there, ask for it, and also on your arrival, the worst they can say is no. That if it's something that will help you reduce cockpit workload or something that will get you to where you need to go faster, more safely as well, then ask for it. See if, they, see if uh, ATC will give it to you that day.